first, I just wanted to show you also the help system inside okay. here. As you mm -hmm. see, this menu is pretty extensive. Each of these have some small resources associated with the products like Field Shield mm -hmm. and now Dark Shield. And under help contents, there's another menu navigation system that goes into more detail about our products, the IRI Workbench tools. And there are user guides here also. However, the Field Shield guide here, for example, this reference refers mostly to the command line job scripting syntax. It's more of a language reference. So to learn Field Shield, you're, for now, initially, you're better off using the GUI to automate job creation as suggested in the demo project's instructions. So for example, looking at this one, you see this has a notes.html file. It gives you some basic this project demonstrates field shield capabilities for masking data in a table. And this demo sends those masked results out to a table and a file. So it shows you how to actually prepare everything and then and then run the job. Another way to start also is to go to the welcome. And here, if you go to the help welcome section, you'll get this whole overview thing. And you can read more about each of the products inside here. And you can choose from various first steps to help you get started. But now that you have the VM, you're, you, you know, you're well on your way. If you know Eclipse, it's even better because you'll be familiar with some of these things. But if not, it's okay. You just you know, follow the instructions. If you see here, the encryption and the decryption scripts, they specify the source and target. If you actually double click on it and open it, it brings up this job. And this is where most of our, of our partners and our customers are operating at the script level. Now, you do not have to create this script by hand. This is auto-generated in the GUI. It is also modifiable either by hand or graphically in the GUI, okay? And there's four or five different ways to interact with this job, but you should know that all of these jobs ultimately are serialized into these scripts and run with these scripts on the command line either from the GUI or from some batch script you have separately. Now this okay. same masking job that I just showed you in script form is also available not only in outline form, but also in mapping diagram form you see here. So this is another way to visualize the project, and this is a more familiar way to data warehouse ETL architects who like to look at left to right input process output workflows with connecting lines between the columns where the orange lines show the columns that have been masked. This orange means it's changed. The blue means there's been no change as the data was mapped from input to output. But there's lots of different ways to look at this job. Also, if you back to the script, if you right click in here and you go to the IRI context menu and under edit targets and target field layout, you can also see the same kind of mapping diagram, except this time, instead of left to right, it's top to bottom. The sources are up here, and the targets are down here. And this particular demonstration job shows a target that goes to a separate database table called patient record encrypted, and also a flat file called standard out, which goes to the console when we run the job. But here you can see the layout of both, right? So this is the table layout. This is the output file layout. And here at the field level, or the column level, is where you actually do your masking. And in this case, the masking has already been specified, and that's why it's reflected in this dialog. But let's say, for example, we wanted to mask an, another column that has not yet been masked, like the first one here for ID number. You can right-click on that field name mm -hmm. and apply a rule. And you can either look for an existing one or create a new one. I'll create a new one. And it brings up my selection of masking rules, for example, here. And from that list, I can then choose one of the various functions. There are a few more that you could do by hand. For example, let's say you had your own separately coded uh, masking function you wanted to invoke. That would be a, a different discussion. But these are the ones that are sort of off the shelf and easy to involve yourself with. Here we have redaction, encryption, pseudonymization. Those are probably the three most popular of the 12 or 13 or so functional categories we support for masking. So the ID field that might be desirable to partially mask, mask that ID number here in the output file. So we would then go to, let's say, redaction. 
Next. And here you see the redaction or string masking dialog where you can either choose a predefined mask for the whole field, uh, let's say for the whole field, or scroll down this list and pick from some canned masks for other formats. You can go down here and make your own. So see here, define mask. Mm. Okay. So this is how you can choose to make an India. If, if, if the ID field were India, you could say something like, well, I want to mask using this, this character. And I want to go from position one for four and add it to the table. If I wanted to actually do some additional masking within that field, I could choose a different character and let's say carrot position six for two and add that to the table. And I, now I have two different masking arguments within the same field. But anyway, this, this job is showing you another view of the script and another way that you can edit the specifications of the job, right? If you want to make changes. Again, this all assumes that a job has already been built, as you see this one has. And you, know, you wind up with something like this. When you go to run it, the way you run the job is you, you can, there's several ways. You can run it from here uh, as an SCL file. You can right click and say run as from here, IRI job. Okay. You can also run it from up here, run as IRI job. You can go to the run configurations and run it from there also. Once it's, but the run configurations is kind of an advanced topic. We'll, we'll do that one later. And so now it's beginning to run on the command line here, you see. Mm. It took a while because it's slow in the, in the VM. But what it did was, this, was the, this is the target. This is one of the two targets that was produced with masked data inside. Okay, if you remember this job originally, what does it do? It's... It has a input up here, mm -hmm. the patient record table in our Oracle database with these columns. And mm -hmm. then it does some sorting and it produces two targets, another table in Oracle and this standard out file down here. This is why you see it after the command line is run, it goes right to the console and we see the output. So this is a nice way to develop with the tool. Just always have a, an out file equal standard out. It's not permanent. It just goes to the console so you can see what's happening. To see the original table in my Oracle database here under the schema Scott, table is called patient record. Scrolling down, and if I right click here and I say data, sample contents, that will run a SQL query and produce the results. So if I want to see them, I can drag this tab up to the top and look at my input up here and my output down here. And in the middle, if I want to, I can look at the, the job this way. Just keep dragging like this. You can reduce this, the size. So this is input. This is the actual job or the script. Same thing with the, uh, with the outline view on the right of what's happening. So there's different ways to look at the job and also interact with it. So for example, if I right, if I click on this, it highlights this. So there's interaction between the outline and the script. And if I right click on this and I click edit, it'll take me right into the target view. And then I can say target field layout. Mm -hmm. So you can, it's very interactive. But anyway, what happened is, and this is what you would want to show your customers, is that we started with a table in Oracle, in this case, patient record, and we used a job, a masking job, with the Field Shield technology to apply different kinds of masking functions to each of the columns. This is another encryption function, but this time, very importantly, the difference is FP, yeah. Format Preserving. So this is Format Preserving Encryption using an AES 256-bit alphanumeric encryption algorithm on the driver's license column. So here, what you see instead is an encrypted version of this original driver's license value. It looks very similar, does it not? But it's not the same. The next one is another redaction of the social security number. Adams Quincy 1122, right. This guy, 1122. Mm -hmm. It's preserved, but the first several characters as defined here are redacted. 
okay. you can re you can redact the whole thing or just partially and this is the most common form of partial redaction of a US social security number the masking is applied to the target that you specify the target can be anything including the original table which is dangerous so in this example we demonstrate two new targets one is an entirely different table called patient record encrypted which is this one and then this is another and this yeah here's the here's the encrypted table down here so in that case we only changed the driver's license number and maybe the credit card number but the location will be database yeah your yes in this yeah, case so it's in this case it's the database and this case it's just at the file but our tool does not store any data we simply oh. create it as you des as you specify it to be created this whole scripting language and all of the functionality and all of the back end data manipulation data processing is iri technology yes okay so this is your own language we can yes, this is IRI's language, but this language has been in the in the world use for since 1992. But anyway, you don't even have to learn that language. A lot of people like to use the scripts, and many people in our customer base still do. But this GUI, this whole IRI Workbench environment, is designed to automate the process of creating the scripts in the first place. So you don't have to learn the language. You can just run a wizard, which will write the script for you. See? Mm -hmm. Create script. So it auto generates the script. And you can click on a table here and go to the IRI menu. And you do something like new test data job or new uh, multi table masking job, subsetting job. Several of these jobs will end up producing a sort seal script fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. So it'll take you a while to play with all this stuff. <laughs> so you have to decide what you want to learn first. But you know, if you just want to do stand, you know, data masking stuff, you stay with this menu: masking job for one source, masking job for multiple sources. But both of these processes will create scripts or workflows. And if you create a workflow, you wind up with a diagram that looks like this, which you can then right-click and export the flow component. If you export the flow flow component it'll produce a .SCL script. Mm -hmm. And if you have a net .SCL script, you can go the other way into a diagram from there. So for example, if you this one turned into a script, I think what we did was you right click on this and you say something like IRI, create flow from script. So you can go in either direction if one doesn't exist. You can create mm -hmm. a script from a flow, you can create a, a flow from a script. But you can always create a, a flow or a script from here, the wizard. But you can play with the wizards to see how it goes, and you'll you'll learn by doing. The other thing to do is, of course, read the notes.html file in each project, and follow each step, and understand what's happening. And that's the way you'll really learn the product very well. Now that's Field Shield, <laughs> mostly. If you want to learn Rogen, you can. There's other things in here like data classification, database subsetting. Those are all advanced topics. If you want to learn Chakramax, which is the database firewall, another learning curve, another completely different user interface because it's a completely different product environment for different activities that are not static. They're more dynamic in nature. The monitoring, the alerting, the dynamic data masking, the auditing, all that stuff happens in a more real-time environment, which is all predicated on certain types of network connections and user authorizations, and so that's a different world. And when you have that kind of prospect, we have to go through that learning process. But for now, I just wanted you to you know, start to get familiar with your own environment, this, these demo projects, the help menu system and email us with any questions.